Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Dr. Tahir Mahmood and today we will learn about nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Before going to nuclear magnetic spectroscopy, I will explain already some terminology which you have learned in previous lecture that is what is spectroscopy. Basically spectroscopy is the electromagnetic interaction of radiation with matter. And in previous lecture I have already explained what is UV visible spectroscopy and IR spectroscopy. Actually, UV visible spectroscopy that is also called electronic spectroscopy is called when radiation fall on a molecule it will cause excitation from low energy state to high energy state. And UV visible spectroscopy basically used for checking the conjugation in the molecule. And IR spectroscopy which are less energetic as compared to visible spectroscopy in IR spectroscopy which is also called vibrational spectroscopy only cause vibration in the molecule and mainly used for the determination of functional group in a molecule. Now here NMR spectroscopy that is called Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy is a powerful analytical tool which is used to characterize organic molecules by identifying carbon-hydrogen framework in the molecule. Because in previous spectroscopy we know the functional group we already studied the conjugation in the molecule now NMR will help us knowing the framework, how many hydrogen and carbon are attached and their position. For NMR spectroscopy, we use radio frequency, which are very much less energetic and have a longer wavelength, 0.1 to 100 meter. Basically, nuclear magnetic resonance as you will mean nuclear. It is deal with nucleus. Because in nucleus there are protons are present which spin along their nuclei and cause a magnetic field. So in nuclear magnetic resonance our main concern with atomic nuclei. The nuclei whose spin quantum number is zero do not spin so we cannot determine it in NMR spectroscopy. Here a table shown for the easiness of the student that if our spin quantum number have even atomic number and even mass number, then they show zero spin quantum number. For example, helium, carbon and oxygen have zero spin quantum number. Two, six, eight are its atomic number. Four, twelve and fifteen are its mass number. And if our atom have odd atomic number and even mass number, then they show integer spin quantum number, for example, isotope of hydrogen D, boron, nitrogen, they have integer spin quantum number, 1, 2, 3. And mainly our concern is with this when they have even or odd atomic number, but odd mass number. Then they show half integer spin quantum number. The isotopes of hydrogen that is proton, boron isotopes, carbon 13, nitrogen 15, oxygen 17. These all show 
half integers in quantum number. But we are mainly concerned with proton and carbon. As in introduction I have explained we know the carbon and hydrogen framework of the molecule. So every atom containing charge whether it is positive or negative constitute a circular electric current which generate magnetic dipole along the spinning axis. When they generate magnetic field, they behave as a tiny bar magnet that is called a nuclear magnet. They have two poles, one is called nitrogen N and other is called S. And so all nuclei have a characteristic magnetic moment because the proton have different magnetic moment and carbon-13 have a different magnetic moment. Normally these behave as a tiny bar magnet and oriented randomly in space, meaning they have no direction. When they do have no applied magne magnetic field. But when we apply the magnetic field, they align in the magnetic field, meaning they have some arrangement. They try to align in lower energy states. The energy difference between two states is very small, that is less than 0.1 calorie. So these ten magnets are shown when no applied magnetic field, so they are randomly oriented. But these are with magnetic field and they have aligned itself against or in the plane of a magnetic field. In a the magnetic field, there are two energy states for a proton. One is called no energy state with the nucleus aligned in same direction as we have applied magnetic field. And other is called high energy state in which the nucleus aligned against applied magnetic field. When an external energy source that match the energy difference between these two states, then they absorb the energy and causing the nucleus to spin flip from one orientation to an other orientation as shown in next diagram. So this type is called spin flipping. The transition of nucleus from low energy state to high energy state induced by the absorption of electromagnetic radiation which are we have provided from outside with appropriate frequency that is termed as spin flipping. The energy difference between these two nuclear spin states corresponds to low frequency region of a electromagnetic spectrum in radio spectrum. So the spin flipping we call alpha spin or beta spin. Here we have shown applied magnetic field. And this is my proton spin in the same direction as we have applied magnetic field. So, with the nucleus aligned in the same direction as applied magnetic field. It is low energy state and it is called alpha spin. But when they are against the applied magnetic field. Here applied magnetic field are in this direction and they are in an opposite direction. So that spin is called beta spin and these are high energy state spin and these are low energy spin state. Both are called spin flipping from one energy state to an other energy state. And this will all this cause when 
the match with the electromagnetic radiation which will be have provided from the outside. Thus, two variables characterized in NM are applied magnetic field and the other is the strength which we measured in Tesla and the frequency of radiation used for NMR are normally represented in hertz or megahertz and mostly megahertz are the units which are used in NMR spectroscopy. Here we have low energy states and these are higher energy states. So converting from high energy spin states to low energy spin states is called spin flipping and that is the energy required for call from one state to an other state. It is called resonance meaning we are changing. Now what is precession and precessional frequency? When uh, we place our nucleus in a uniform applied magnetic field, then they orient in the magnetic axis of the nucleus parallel or anti-parallel to it. So this is the spinning nuclei and this is the applied magnetic field. So this is called precession, meaning they cause an orbit that is called precessional orbit and the speed in which they are moving is called precessional frequency. But since the nucleus is spinning in the fact that move around the axis of the applied magnetic field and draw a circle perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. This is applied magnetic field and here is the precessional orbit which is perpendicular to this applied magnetic field. So this is called precession and precessional frequency of the nucleus is termed as precessional frequency. The precessional frequency needed for resonance and the applied magnetic field strength are proportional to each other. So here we have represented a mathematical relationship. V is frequency and V0 is applied magnetic field. They are directly proportional to each other. As we increase the magnetic field, larger will be the difference between two spin states and higher will be their frequency. Uh, so normally in NMR spectrometer, 300 megahertz, 500 megahertz and so far are used depending upon the frequency of the radiation used for resonance. These spectrometers are very useful magnet to create a small but measurable energy difference between two possible spin states. So depending upon the variability in the magnetic field and the frequency, they are mainly divided into two modes. First one is called frequency sweep mode. Here we will fix the applied magnetic field strength. And frequency of the electromagnetic radiation is varied. So that is why it is called frequency sweep mode. While in field sweep mode, here we will fix the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation and Applied magnetic field is varied. That is why it is called field wave mode. For purely technical reason, it is more convenient to use field wave mode. And from all the discussion, now we have come to conclusion. The nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy concerns the measurement of energy required to pass transition of the spinning nuclei from low energy spin states to higher energy spin states in an applied magnetic field. The sensitivity of the nuclear signal of equal nucleus depends upon its magnetic movement which is represented by our mu. 
Normally there are two common types of NMR spectroscopy. One is called HNMR, which is used to determine proton in the molecule. And other is C13 NMR, which are used to determine the carbon type in the molecule. The magnetic moment of proton is relatively high because the natural abundance of these isotopes in hydrogen is 99.98% while other isotopes are in few percentage. So, NMR signal are detected fairly easily. But, you see 13 NMR, it's only one fourth of the magnetic moment as compared to proton. Because the natural abundance of C13 isotopes in C12 is very low. So, in NMR signal, C13 is less sensitive and is not easily detected. So, very sensitive instrument is required for C13 as compared to HNMR. The sources of energy in NMR is radio wave, which are very long wavelength and thus very low energy and frequency. When these low energy radio waves interact with molecule, they can change nuclear spin of some element including proton and carbon-13. Different nuclei of same kind in a molecule process with different frequency in applied magnetic field due to different environment, mean they have different carbon hydrogen or different group are attached. So they have different environment that is why they show different nuclei. Electromagnetic radiation of different frequency are required to cause a change in their spin orientation. So frequency at which absorption occur can be used for qualitative analysis of the compound. Thank you very much.